Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Board. Today what we're going to be doing is building a Daemon Byte USB adapter. Because while I've enjoyed playing with Mr. a lot, in some of my previous videos I've mentioned that I don't like the fact that cores for the arcades or for the Neo Geo don't have a traditional arcade stick. So we're definitely going to rectify that today. Before we get too far involved, if you can give me a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. Definitely appreciate that. If you feel so inclined you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down there as well. But the Daemon Byte adapter is awesome because it doesn't require many parts, it's not expensive, and by the end we will be using this arcade stick on our mister. You'll see here I have the Arduino Pro Micro, I've got some DuPont connectors, and then I have a DB15 port. It is a male version. The parts you need may depend on what you're trying to adapt over. This is for a DB15 stick, so I can't promise that it's going to be a male adapter you need. You may need female, but this is to get a Super Gun Arcade stick working on Mr. here. I have male to male DuPont connectors, and I also have female to male connectors as well. Depends on what you want to use for the project. But the end goal is we're going to be using this DB15 arcade stick that I've shown on the channel before that I use on my super gun all the time and we're going to adapt that over to USB so we can use it on the mister for the Neo Geo cores, for the CPS cores, for a lot of the arcade cores it's going to feel natural. You'll see those, those little cups right there. What we're going to have to do is do some soldering to get it adapted over to that Pro Micro board. And I will say that the Pro Micro board is relatively small so you're going to have to have some decent soldering skills. I've already put the headers on one board but very shortly I'll put another board on there. I use the headers. You could go bare wire into the board but I like the headers that way I can use it for more than one purpose and you'll see here that we have a second Pro Micro with those headers that you're going to pop in as well. Like I said you can go bare wire on this board. I just like using the headers because that allows me to unplug and plug different things in for different uses but these boards are quite cheap. You can get a three pack for like $15 so depending on how many you want to make is going to be totally up to you. I made one for that stick and one for my Neo Geo AES stick. But before we get into soldering whatsoever, what we really want to do is flash the board with the code because these little cheap boards are notorious sometimes are not working well, so you definitely want to make sure the code's on there and correct before you build something that's going to be useless. Take a look at the Daemon Byte page here, you'll see that they have statistics on how much lag is going to be on there, and then they have different wiring diagrams depending on what you're doing. Now we're using a pinout that's custom because this is a custom stick, but if you're adapting something for like PlayStation 3, he's going to have a pinout for you, he's going to have a pinout for the Neo Geo AES stick as well, but depending on what you're adapting over, you may need to have your own pinout. If you built your own arcade stick, you're definitely going to know what the pins go to, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But this is a really good resource to see if you want to get a Neo Geo controller adapted over to Mr. He's going to tell you all the different pins that you're going to need on that DB15 connector, as well as the through-hole adapters for the Pro Micro. And right at the bottom here, you're just going to see that you need to download the free Arduino application, and it's going to give you very basic directions. I'm going to go over all of them step-by-step step to show you. But if you don't have the Arduino program, just click that link and you can get it for Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever program you need, it's going to be available here. So just download whatever program version you need. When you want to get the code, just click code and do download zip. Don't right click on the individual files and save them to your desktop or any folder because what I found out is this brings down HTML code inside of the file for some reason and it won't build in the Arduino program. So just download that zip and you'll go ahead into the folder that you unzip it into and you'll see that INO file which is what you can double click to launch the sketch app for Arduino or you can just open it up in the program just make sure you're using the right version before you get in there you'll see I go to the folder double click on that and it's gonna open up another window with all the code that we need so it's a multi-step process first we're gonna go to sketch and we're going to go ahead and compile the code it's gonna verify it's correct and it's gonna compile it for you this is in real time it takes about 10 seconds at the most it says done compiling so we know the code is good from there what we want to do is just make sure we have the right device selected i know it's called a mini pro but this program is going to see it as a leonardo so just make sure that's selected it should auto select it for you when you plug it in via usb but if it doesn't pick the leonardo and then just make sure you're on the right com port there's only going to be one com port unless you have multiple arduinos plugged in Go ahead and click upload and again in real time you're going to see that it's uploading it'll disconnect the device and reconnect it and the code is flashed now that we know that this is a good pro micro we can go ahead and start soldering these headers onto the board and you'll see here 
they're relatively fine pitch. They're not the smallest in the world. It's not like surface mount stuff, but you have to have a decent soldering skill. I'm no expert, but scale to a penny, you'll see that those pins are relatively close together. So I've done one side off camera because I really don't like soldering on camera. It's even hard just for me to get these headers into the holes when I'm kind of looking over my shoulder. But what we want to do is just go ahead and pop those headers into the holes. It'll take me a second here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to tack both ends of that header down. You can just use something to balance it on because this is, you know, even in level, we can just stand it up there. It's not the greatest rule of thumb to solder with it just free floating like I am, but it is a weird angle for me to solder at. I'm just trying to get it on camera. But go ahead and tack down one leg on each end, and that's going to keep the rest of that header in place. So when you do need to solder it, you're not fighting with it. You're not fighting with gravity. You know, six to one half dozen the other. You're making it easier on yourself. And like I said, I apologize. It takes me a bit to solder this because I am looking through the camera as well as over the camera to try to do it. But when we get those two legs popped in and solidified, we'll just go down the line and solder each individual through hole with solder. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because it's kind of boring. It's the same thing each time, but it's not too hard. Don't apply too much solder and you should be perfectly fine. I wouldn't take this on as your first soldering job because it is relatively easy to bridge pins. You'll see here I do have a bridge, but if that happens, just go ahead and use your soldering iron and move that solder around. Surface tension is going to take care of it for you. You'll see those blobs fell right into place. And I'll just go all the way down the line of finishing that up until we have a good solder joint on each one of those connections so now we have the header soldered in on that micro pro on both sides we're able to now connect those dupont connectors because there is just one ground that it's shared across the entire device i use a black wire for that that's going to denote ground usually and that way the only wire on this board will be black so i know what my ground is because if ground doesn't work nothing will work that's just your basic rule of thumb and all i've done is extend that header out to that male DuPont connector, but we're actually not going to need those male connectors and I'll explain that in a little bit. What I've done here is I have all my different wires out and I've kept them in bundles, five wires for one side. I've got my ground separate and then I'm going to go ahead and have four colored wires for up, down, left, and right in a bundle. And then I'm going to have those other buttons, those three at the bottom in their own. This just keeps it a little bit neater and cleaner. You don't have to do it. It's just what I recommend. But now we have all the leads we need to solder into that DB15 port. But we don't actually need the male pin headers. They're not going to fit in those little cup sockets with the black attachments. So all I'm going to do is take a pair of side cutters. You can use scissors, whatever you have. And I'm going to snip all of them off. It's slightly wasteful, but I have like 300 of these headers in a box in my office. So honestly... These are cheap. I think it's like $5 to buy like a hundred of them. So don't feel too bad cutting them. But now that we have those wires snipped, all I'm going to do is come in with my wire strippers and I just need to take a little bit of that insulation off. You don't need too much, but you don't want too little. You'll see here as I take that off, it's probably about a millimeter and a half. Just go ahead and look at your DB15 port and see how much wire you need. Normally, I would have taught you how to do this with a field termination DB15 port, a screw post, but it just wasn't really taking with the pressure. The signal wasn't good. And I use just a little tiny bit of flux on each lead so the solder is going to adhere to that a little bit better. I got a little bit too much here. If you use too much, just go ahead and take it back off the tip and smear it on the next wire. But what we need to do now is just prime that cup with a little solder. We don't need too much. We don't want to glob it on there. We just get a good dose in. And then what we'll do is we'll use the soldering iron, reflow that solder, and we're going to advance the wire in. You'll see that there's a couple hanging wire threads there. I just push those in with a soldering iron. Again, on camera, not as easy as off. But now that we have that black ground lead in pin one, which is the the correct pin for my arcade stick yours may vary all we've done is extend that wire out to that female header and i'm going to go ahead and off camera do all of those wires and you'll see now i have the entire array every single wire i need to go to that micro pro the daemon bite adapter is ready and i'm just going to go ahead and pop this in the case i'll leave the link to these products below i don't make any money off giving you guys links for amazon it's just what i like to use it was a little hard to put this together on camera so i did it off again but you just snap it on and put some screws in, no big deal. And like I said earlier, 
you have to have the pinout for the device you're using. If it's DB15, if it's DB9, you need to have a pinout. So just follow the pinout for your device. It's going to be different. If you have questions about it, let me know. I'm happy to help you guys as much as I can. But now we have everything we need to connect this up to a mister. And I do check continuity on every single wire into that male DB15 port because if there's any problems, you want to identify them now versus finding out later. And you'll see here, I have my arcade stick with that DB15 cable going into the adapter I just made, into the Daemon Byte, and into the mister. Now, my arcade stick doesn't have an extra button for home, so I do use a second controller. And I didn't want to drag my PVM out to the living room or the office or the dining room to show you this guy's better. So it's just on my computer system, deal with it. This works perfectly fine. I popped over to the Neo Geo Core and I played a little bit of Pulse Star and it's amazing on the stick. It is so much better than using a controller. This is how I play the game on my Neo Geo AES and it now feels perfect on the mister. This is 100% in my opinion, the way to go. And these adapters can be made on the cheap. I think all the total parts are maybe $12 for one adapter. Short of that, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm happy to help you guys. Short of that, I will be back with another Mr. Video next week, and I'll have videos on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday as well. But again, definitely check out the Damon Byte adapter. It's really easy to deal with. If you can solder, it's easy to put together, and they do sell them online pre-made. Short of that, thanks so much for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.